Kara. First of all, congratulations on your debut novel. And this must be such an exciting time. Have you always wanted to be an author? I think I've always written. I've always wanted to write. I started off writing quite terrible poetry. And <laughs> what, from when you were a child? Yeah, I think, you know, I started, I guess, you know, 10, 11, I was writing poetry. By the time I was 12 or 13, I was journaling quite a lot. Um, writing short stories. I don't think I was ever brave enough to write a novel until I got into my 30s, I guess, after I'd had children and I was at home more, I was working part time. And I decided that I was going to take a course in beginning creative writing. And my beginning creative writing course started the ball rolling, I think. And I'm always really going. interested in the in the author's process. Do you set yourself times to write? Do you lock yourself away to write? Do you write by hand or do you write on a screen? I, yeah, always on a screen. I write notes. I write a lot of notes. I fill a lot of notebooks. I also love stationery, so I mm -hmm. buy a lot of notebooks. <laughs> so I have to fill them all. Um, but yeah, I generally write on my computer and when the kids were little, it was snatching time between them sleeping mm -hmm. and I'd write in the evening. More now, I get up really early. So I start writing at about 6 a.m. And I write for a few hours, a couple of hours, put the kids to school and mm -hmm. write some more. Um, but I love getting totally immersed in a world. And then time can just run for hours on those days. And other well, days it's harder. <laughs> I've loved being immersed in your world <laughs> oh, <laughs> reading you. it. Um, and where does your love of writing come from? I guess as writers, we start as readers. Yeah. And I started reading really early mm -hmm. on. Um, and so I immersed myself in other people's worlds. Mm -hmm. And I found massive comfort in it. Like reading was my thing. I would go to and I started um, reading, you know, Secret Seven and Famous Five. That's kind of where I started. And Dick and Smith, I loved the talking animals. So I think that's how I started getting into story. I loved the form. And then I wanted to create my own story. It's the best escape ever, isn't it? And I always think wherever I go in the world, as long as I've got a book with me, I've got a companion. Yeah. <laughs> and I have I have to have a bag that can fit a book. Yeah. If a bag too. doesn't fit a book. Or two then, or three. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> then I then that bag's not for me. Because yeah, yeah everywhere I go I carry a book. Because you carry a world with you. Totally. You? Yeah. And this novel was written in collaboration with your mother Judith Miller, is that right? Yeah, she consulted on the book. So she was the person I went to and said what what antiques are we going to put in? Because she is an expert in antiques yeah, she's and, an and expert. was an expert on antiques roadshow. Exactly. Um, and she's a generalist, which is amazing for me in this series because she knew so much about so many things. And I think when I had the first idea for the novel, I love, I play Cluedo with right. my kids and I love that. And there's a whole element of, you know, Reverend Green in the library with a candlestick. Yeah. But I wanted to know what candlestick it was. Yeah. Is it Art Nouveau? Right. <laughs> like, and is that because you grew like, up around antiques? Yeah, I guess so. Um, because my parents would always be pointing it out. Right. You know, this is a very expensive candlestick. <laughs> Stop playing with the, you know, the wax. Yes. Or, um, so I, pho I phoned her and I was like, this is the story I've got. I have Freya and I have Aunt Carol. And I want to put them in a world that I grew up in, mm -hmm. that's surrounded by these things that we all loved. But what would the candlestick be? Mm -hmm. Which is where the line, what antique would you kill for? Yes. Came from. And how did she actually help when you were writing about the antiques in the book? Did she make particular suggestions that you found useful about them? Because it's very detailed, the descriptions that you give of things and fascinating. She did. Um, some things I knew that I wanted to put in the book, mm -hmm. um, you know, the furniture, the, the Chippendale, um, 
that kind of furniture I, I wanted in the book. But actually it was the discussion on, I wanted a kind of central antique, mm -hmm. something that was quite iconic, if you like. And is that the bird? Yes. And, and how did you come up with the bird? Is the bird a real bird or is it a, a fictional bird? Um, so Martin's brother's birds are real. Um, they're avant-garde birds. Um, they were made by four brothers, the yeah. Martin brothers. Fascinating story. Um, and so when I said to her, what could we bring in? She immediately said, well, you know, why don't you use the Martins brothers birds? And I didn't realize I knew what they were until she said it. And the yeah. moment she said it, I was like, of course, because I love them. Mm -hmm. They look so unusual. Mm. I don't know if I'd have one in my house. Because mm, they're quite spooky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the big beaks yeah. and the big eyes. And there's a little, there's an owl that's winking that I kind of love, but I still don't know if I'd want it in my house. So I, I wanted to put that in a book so that people could then go away and Google something really mm. quite interesting. Um, because the Martins brothers never really worked their way out of poverty within their lifetime. And yet... They are celebrated yeah. um, so, um, ceramics makers. But what I found uh, uh, brilliant about what you did is that not only do we explore the antiques world, but also the emotional, you know, and the value of things, the, the, the currency value of them, but also the emotional value of them as well, which is unexpected because you give one of the darker characters, a very emotional attachment to to one of the antiques. I don't want to give anything away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's I think it's really important to explore um the different values we place on something. Yeah. Um our emotional value, the market value, mm -hmm. um, a family value. You know, you can have a family family heirloom that the family loves, but you you don't value at all mm. um and i kind of wanted to explore that in the book too and i think um giving maybe darker characters some emotional connection mm -hmm. to an item um i like the way that that explores the theme and also that leads you in this book um into the world of crime as well and the connection between antiques and crime which i found fascinating that you that they become traded and become a sort of bank of antiques from which money gets laundered, really, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's it's a fiction book. Yes. <laughs> so there is a there is. Um, but a I lot imagine of there things. must be some truth in it as yeah, well. Yeah, I mean, there? there's de there is definitely truth behind the fact that antiques are used as collateral. Yeah. Um, and I mean, the antiques black market, I think, is valued at nearly sixty billion dollars. Wow currently um, and the FBI art crime squad are removing up to 80 million dollars of art and antiques from um, the black market probably every year mm -hmm. but that's not scratching the surface mm. so it's a, it's a massive industry if yeah. you like um, so I kind of took all those nuggets and kind of put it in our cozy crime murder mystery setting a, a, a crime books the books that you like to read is that a, is that a genre that you've loved yeah always like I said I started with kind of you know famous five secret seven and then moved on to Agatha Christie and me too oh, thank God. Yeah. and I I just I I adore them and I've actually revisited quite a few of them recently and I still love them because mm -hmm. I'd read them so long ago mm -hmm. um I also think that my kind of go-to comfort tv is murder mystery yeah so it, it's both really I I read a lot of um crime but I also watch a lot of crime and I, I love it. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, now having read your book out loud, the characters jump off the page with how you've written them. Where did you find your inspiration for the characters? I guess a lot of the characters are in the book are um, a combination of different people mm -hmm. I know. I think the one that stands out the most is um, the Aunt Carol character mm -hmm. because when I decided I wanted two kind of intergenerational um, characters mm -hmm. I knew I wanted someone in there well I shouldn't really <laughs> say their age but you know kind of late 60s early 70s who was vivacious and mm. full of life and full of kind of power and charge mm. and the person I knew 
like that in my life um, is Carol Ashby, who was an ex-Bond girl mm -hmm. and who is just a wonder. And mm -hmm. I've, I've known her since I was 10 or 11. Um, so I phoned her up and said, I want to put you in a book. And she said, darling, absolutely. I'd love to be in a book. <laughs> <laughs> and um, she's been a massive support. Um, everyone else is kind of a mixture of, you know, people I know or have known or just imagined them up. Well, it's very easy when I've been reading it aloud to cast the characters in my head. So I've got a whole stellar cast for when it appears <laughs> <laughs> on television, which I'm sure it will, or film. <laughs> um, I would love to know which character you enjoyed voicing the most when you were reading the book. Well, I love Freya because I feel I can relate to her as a as a woman at a certain age. And I have to say, I love that you've written two brilliant, strong female characters of different ages. Um, and I felt very invested in her history and her past and the relationship that she'd been in. And now with this change and at a crossroads and what happens next um, as you're child I've got a daughter too like you similar ages actually but what happens when your child grows up and where does that leave you so I really related to her um as a female as a female character as a woman and and what stage of life she was in um and I really enjoyed using my voice as the narrative voice um and then Carol of course because she's just a delight to play so when I first read the book your book um I'd cast her in my head as Joanna Lumley and slightly ab fab and uh, with a deep husky voice and then I read that it was based on Carol so I looked her up and I was like perfect so I've now got this wonderful combination of of Carol and Joanna Lumley <laughs> in my head and I just relished playing her um but I also enjoyed the I enjoyed playing Amy um who I had as a sort of Kristen Scott Thomas cool character yes. um, and then they all go slightly <laughs> like broader than that yeah. I had John Hurt as Arthur Crockleford um, and I had Ben Wishaw as uh, Harry not in his voice but uh, picturing him in my head yeah. so I've really relished playing all of them and that's such a great um, treat I think as you know when you're narrating a book that you can see the characters so alive and visual um, it ha certainly helps playing them when you're sitting in a booth by yourself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know. It's it's funny because I guess the characters are all their voices are all in my head. Yeah. I think it's amazing hearing it come to life. I think it's one of the joys of Audible that, you know, you don't have to um, read a book for a book to come to life. You can also listen, listen to through it. yeah yeah I think it's amazing well uh, I also have to say the way that you write it um makes it very easy to read out loud which it sometimes it's it, you know a book is not written to be read out loud and it's much harder but you write with such good dialogue it was um very enjoyable but if you're playing all the characters yourself you're talking to yourself all the time so I was very grateful to you oh I love that I love dialogue I love yeah. writing dialogue. I find it fun. And it's quite fast paced to write. Yes, yes. Um, so I love that. Yeah, you loved it. On a different tack, do you um, like antiquing? Do you have antiques in your house? Or what do you, what are you drawn to? I am drawn to, and appropriately to your story, to things which I love which would carry sentimental value and which have a story to them. So when I got my first house in my 20s, um, I just delighted in going to, we had a, a there's a second hand um, vintage shop, which is no longer there in Acton. And with a lovely older woman running it. And I would go in and literally clean her out of things <laughs> secondhand uh, furniture or tablecloths or napkins or candlesticks or things for the garden and um and it, uh, it, the house had such character because of these things that I found and I love going to auctions 
um, and it's a real eclectic mi mix of things which I've now brought into my into the house that I now live in which is around the corner um, so I don't know the value of things at all but I know when I love something and I know that it um, it means more to me if it's got a story to it and an emotional connection than it does if it's got a currency connection. So nothing I own is valuable, <laughs> but to me it's valuable yeah. and I really, really care about it. So I really related to this story. Um, and I did do a, a show called The Antiques Road Trip once, which was like my dream show, which was going to look in. Amazing, for, in a car, yes, <laughs> driving around looking for yeah, antiques. With experts, yeah. of course, um, who could tell you the real stories behind them. Um, and I think my favourite uh, things that I have are pictures because you create stories around pictures, don't you? And then wonder who has had those pictures hanging on their walls before and where they were and what they meant and so yes I do love antiques but but for their history yeah and I think we fill our house with things we love don't yeah. we yeah. so it's not always about how valuable something is it's yeah. more about surrounding ourselves with things that give us joy yes exactly I've been told that I can say that there is another book in the Antique Hunter series, thank goodness. So please, will you tell us a little bit about it? Sure. So the next book is called The Antique Hunter's Death on the Red Sea. It's when Freya and Aunt Carol take to the seas to find a missing antiques expert and uncover the one of the most valuable black market antiquities. <gasps> That's very exciting. It's and very I can't exciting. Wait to read I it. have nearly um, finished it, so it will be out in the world. Well, I'm very much looking forward to it. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for letting me read your book. And thank you so much <laughs> for narrating it for me.